secular prayers. Let the life and the washing be solid as flesh. The secular prayers. Wind and light unhook the day from the curtain rod. The secular prayers. Brook noise, traffic, breath, the dense cover, the thick skin. Secular prayers. Let the earth be soft and still, drench my dry meadow. Circular prayers, bring light, bring relief, bring news, thank God that's over. The circular prayers, the cat in the yard, the leaves, intimate gestures. The circular prayers, may the fear that eats our bones find other graveyards. The circular prayers, let them love us, the furious, the indifferent ones. The secular prayers, let us name things as we will, without consequence. So those were the haiku sort of things, but there are other, they're like tiny prose pieces. I don't know what they are. Um, I think they are poems, or something like poems. Like the haiku, this too has a series of regular phrases at the front. It's a memory of my father who died three years ago, who loved telling jokes during dinner. You rather insist on that. My father is telling jokes over dinner. 
There is only one dinner in his life, and this is the one with a shaggy dog story. We listen. My father is telling jokes over dinner. He takes out his harmonica and plays us a joke. That's an old one, I say. The best, he winks. My father is telling jokes over dinner. Have you heard this one, he asks. Which one, I ask. The one I have told you already. <laughs> My father is telling jokes over dinner. In one of them, he has died. In another, he is alive. I wait for the punchline. My father is telling jokes over dinner, but I can see the starvation on the cutlery he is raising to his mouth. My father is telling jokes over dinner. The jokes begin to taste of dinner. Soon there are jokes on every plate. Take, eat. <laughs> With a pair of glasses on reading poetry, I would have said, yeah. Um, I worked for uh, several years as a child protection social worker. And uh, during that time, uh, I sat in many conferences. And uh, this was a result of um, one of those conferences I sat in. And uh, this piece called Forecast. Tomorrow, at all 600 hours, all our children should be considered. Circular scars raised, one centimetre diameter, lower left nipple. Old corresponding wound tissue, right anterior, lower rib cage. Several similar, upper left quadrant, right buttock. Triangular mark to central thorax area fading. Latent swelling lacerations to lower spine, six centimetres length, one centimetre width. Linear, four centimetre marks, welted below tibial tuberosity on left leg, bony prominence. Purple bruising to second and metacarpal phalangeal joint, the joints between the hand and fingers. Old brown fingertip bruising to upper inner thigh, parental response inconsistent, no clear history given. We call the best both punches, which harken back to Robert Burns, the best made plans to know that. When I left for your house, I had a spring in my step and a heart full of lusty thoughts. My mouth was overflowing with romantic verses, a harvest of words. My head was bursting with a thousand hopes, but as insurance, I bought some flowers. Now I stand before your door, my mouth dry, my head empty, and even the flowers have wilted. I would like to describe the centre of my soul. I would like to describe the navel, the umphalos, set where two eagles cross, mm. sent in different directions by a god seeking the centre of his world. I would like to describe a place from which sacred springs start a river into a gulf where tankers pass. To put it another way, these are my veins and arteries, the feet, eyes of Langerhan, the aorta, the corpus callosum. I would like to describe whatever else these thoughts and feelings as they bathe in sound, light, scent, on a shore where the human body flows, where hands cut purple pebbles. From there, I would send out my own eagles. And my last one. Is there hope? I asked. And the wife of me stood up even more stark. Mm -hmm. It was in May, the sky poured. The day the waters overflowed, I left Porta Peru Port. Abandoned on the platform were black trunks and town suitcases, forsaken to get drenching while the porters huddled under the wind red awning. 
The long brown train awaited the flutter of the guard's green flag. As with slick wet hair from the window I stared at a shadow I thought was there. Friends wrote after long silences to say they told you I'd shed tears on the platform awash with water, scraped onto the train and cried again. It was too good not to repeat. You were puzzled when you heard this, or well, that's the version I received. It wouldn't have changed anything, you said, if you'd been there, if you'd spoken. It wouldn't have erased the train timetable or the date of leaving for the program if you'd said, best of luck in life, my friend, or another farewell, equally in I would have lived exactly the life I have. They could all have panned out the same. I would have left on the day the sky poured, the day the gutters overflowed, even if you'd stood there to say, hello, goodbye, I care. Tears, you'd asked with purpose brow, when the story was repeated of rampant lightning and umbrellas twisted by the storm, of the face squelched to the streaky window. Tears, for what purpose? There were pillars on the platform, posters on the pillars imploring us to stick no bills. The yellow of the posters was shiny with paint, water ash. The pillars were white and round, the sodden green flag was down. The train slipped out from the way not there, away from the shadow I walked around. It was in May, the sky poured, the gutters overflowed. I left Kotopuro behind. The train ran the time. Reflected here, 
but I feel cold. Dream of arriving. <clears throat> Dream of arriving to have that idea of the fullness of spring and its joy reflected here, but I feel cold. She writes long letters, but less and less of the fullness of spring and its joy, nothing else rises to the surface. She writes long letters, less and less, while I listen for her invitation, nothing else rises to the surface. Oslo is somewhere I visited once long ago. While I listen for her invitation, she notes the love of her children, husband. Oslo is somewhere I visited once long ago, all fading into fragments, jaded. She notes the love of her children, husband. I turn the page and turn the page, memories all fading into fragments, jaded. In her letters, she talks mostly of her garden. I wake where I'm sleeping in my room, but the walls are gone, and all I see are night shapes twisting away from the bed. They're brambles, I think. Yes, they are, and in full fruit. And now I can feel the night's a warm one. And now I can feel there is no breeze. Trying to find my bearings by the moon and the brown mirrored rear of the Department of Health, always to its right, which has gone like a fence to the park, like the park and the flats. And now I can see the shape of outhouse. And now I can see the moon on glass. I get up and not finding my slippers walk on through grass, which in part is boggy which is not such a bad thing. And as it's a full moon, I see the flowers waiting to sleep. Viola Tricola, tickle me fancy, heart seeds, jump up and kiss me. To lift the voices. Blind, he listens to a shellac disc of leader. Nuances the ear to catch inflections on the wing. A pause. A breath, the pattern secreted before the note, all that furthers music calmly engineered. The storer accompanies the daunting tread of singer, doleful pianist and Schubert on their winter's day. Cylinder, shellac, vinyl tape, containers of baritone, leaving each imperfect vessel, Winterreiser pounds the ear gloom of an organ grinder trapped by technical blemish. Unbroken Schubert seeds his progress of despair. Enthused each measured step, joyful of our outcome. With dark precision, an engineer cleans artifact. Snowflakes, real and mind-like, blow into his room, white or matted, on his desk, freezing the headphones. Another's winter intrudes on Song's journey. He cannot picture, only feel the cold of heartbreak. The window shut. In solitude he rests assured, closing down the sounds that never fade within. Pianist and singer stalk the shifting journey, each shock cleaning interpretation. The storer drinks of warming wine. Small, each gesture for the anxious archive. Larger, perhaps, his sense of consolation. Master of the sonic, lifts the voices. In this clearing, the soul looks upon the wellspring of life. Each scent and form separate, discriminate. Drop of white flowers, whole form, quick form, white form, black form, may. Bend down to the wash of blue, blue bell, Spanish, English. Taylor, more scented, prefiguring death. To the lily, wood anemone, lesser, greater, sunburn, pink purslane, campion, violet, dog violet, primrose, butter rose, pink eyed, drum eye, cuckoo pint, air, and lord and lady, Adam and Eve, bobbin, wake bobbin, spade sheaves around spadix, to the honey sweet yellow anthem, the pungent leaf of, stalk of, ramsey, wild garlic. The damp earth warm, well lit before the canopy of the leaf. Sun after rain, each twig and branch grassy. Look up through the cut buds, captains to new leaves, each blade velvet bloom, shiny, serrated, smooth. Holly, ilex, 
Oval Boats Road, Order, Beach, while Service, Sycamore, Maple, Lime, London, Plain, Pure, Hybrid Oak, Common, Uncommon, Pedunculate, Sessile, English, Dernas, Turkey, American Red, Cork, Lucknow. Squint to the screen of set, array, compound defects, alternate, pair, or posing, mountain ash, falsification, common ash, harmed chestnut horse, sweet, framing the light, dappling the sun, overlapping hands, concealing blue, white, gray, scudding clouds, skying a mackerel sky. What individuates the hyacity of cloud? Pyrrhus, Panus, Vellum, Incus, Mamma, Virga, Chuba, Fumulus. Be dazzled by the effects of light and air. Halo, Moxon, Sun God, Pahelion, Ark, Corona, Ibis, Glory. Listen to the burly, aggregation, roost, mess, leech, drove, eerie, rout, clue of birds. How many notes, mother? Lowing, bellowing of bullfinches, chime, family, herd of wrens, cloud, keg, murder, blackbird, hermitage, mutation, rash of thrushes. Calls of alarm, defense, attraction, mating, birth, confusion, mischief, tallying, charm, tribe, murder of magpies, accredit curve, call and answer, hunger, chatter, clutter, hosting, murmuration, cloud, filth, scourge, congregation, stars, too numerous to count, wing beats, imperceptible, charm, churn, chirp of bullfinches, red face, resting seeds of pine cones, Jay's parakeets escaped from the circus. One pair of pastels soaring, key, 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 destined, veridical to that vernal sky, hum of traffic in the distance, a woman strolls by, learning a score by heart. Welcome, George. Thanks for being prompt. Are you going to read your fish poem? <laughs> it must have become quite a curse round your neck. You mean the one about a trout? Or was it a turbot? I usually try and judge what an audience want. So if they look as if they like fish, I don't read it. <laughs> Surely, if they like fish, you would read it. Oh no, don't forget, on the surface, the poem's about a grilled turbot, but underneath it's about sexual behaviour. So if they are fond of fish as a species, then I wouldn't want to cause any upset by grilling a turbot. You understand, I have to be PC these days. You're so sensitive, our audience will love you. Not at all. I always put the punters first. You never know what oddballs are sitting out there. We don't want to offend the fish brigade do we? On the corner, as I pass, finding a pile of rags that stinks of no one's urine but his own, the ragged man. And on what impulse do I stop and stare as he scans a map spread before him, as he turns to the 105th degree to the Northwest Territories? It is to them he raises shriveled arms, as if to lift and tense an unseen bow. To them he pulls back, and still further back, for the delicate touch on his blackened earlobe, and suddenly lets go to Yellowknife, to Inuvik, to the great bear, to the great slave, to the Mackenzie River, to what his outward eye has never seen, and what he bring crashing down upon this dry street, the cold, the unconditional flood. When I answered the letters Ulyanov wrote me, I had guessed already what love might mean. My attentiveness, a discipline, to make me as pure as our shared white exile. Our sweet talk sinking into the language on a big idea. The exhilaration, like a troika ride through candied forest. The abruptly shaken manes of horses scattering their halo of sound until we are distant, disappearing, reduced at last to a quietness wrapped in tinsel. 
and such contentment in possessing only what we needed. Our books, ourselves, a purpose. Years later, we visited terraced slums and then worked on into a foreign night. Our homeless script like figures tramping across the snow. <laughs>